Hey there guys, you're watching Code Lab. Welcome to lesson four in the CSS animation bite size series. And in this lesson, we're gonna be learning all about the keyframes function and the animation property. Now, the keyframes are always the workhorse of CSS animations. And what it does is allows to control the intermediate steps in a CSS animation. So when you specify a CSS style inside the keyframe rule, the animation will gradually change from the current style to the new style at certain times that you specify and you can change the CSS styles as many times as you want. Now to initialize the keyframes function you must first specify it using a specialized CSS at rule. So first the app followed by the keyframes keyword. So let's dive into VS Code now and look at the keyframes function in action. So we're inside VS Code guys and as you can see inside the body here uh, we have a div of the class of container which houses our image um, of the orange submarine that you see here in the browser that we've been using throughout this tutorial. Now this also has a class of submarine because we need to apply the animation property to an element. In this case it's going to be the image. So if we had inside the style sheet you can see I've just got some global styles inserted here already and the image or the class of submarine has a width of 180 pixels. Now underneath that you can see I've already inserted the keyframes function, so the app and then followed by the keyframes uh, keyword. Now we've also got this identifier and what this is is basically just what we're going to be calling our animation. So I'm going to call that animation sub, so short for submarine. And then what we do from here is that any styles we apply inside this keyframe will be associated with the keyword of sub. And then to initialize the uh, animation, we'll go inside the element that we want to apply the animation to. In this case, the uh, the image with the class of submarine. So we insert the animation property inside here, link it with the keyframe of sub, and then the two will combine together to create the animation. So let's insert some styles inside this keyframe now. Now for keyframe styles, we've got two options. You can either use the keywords of from and to, or we can use percentages. Now percentages are much more flexible because you can have as many reference points as you like whereas the keywords from and to are only two reference points. Now we will look at a percentage example a bit later on, but for now let's just keep it simple and use the from and to keywords. Now in our example here, I want the submarine to move from, so the from keyword, its current position to the other side on the x-axis. So from its current position to the other side on along the x-axis here. So what we're gonna do is go inside here and we're gonna say from its current position. So we're gonna say transform translate x on the x-axis so it's going to start at zero pixels from its uh, current position and then two we're going to say transform translate x and let's just say 500 pixels so we've created our keyframe here and we've added uh, from and two styles but to get the animation to work we must bind the animation to an element and to do that we need the animation property now, like in the previous videos, there is a shorthand for the animation property, but it's best to go over all the longhand versions first so you guys can get a better understanding of how they all work. So the first thing we need to do, as mentioned, is we need to link this keyframe with a submarine. So we go inside the class of submarine and we're gonna say animation name and the animation name or the keyframe name is sub. So now we've linked these two together and then we need the second major ingredient here, which is animation duration. So how long we want the animation to be and just say 10 seconds and you'll see now the animation will start taking effect immediately. Now, just like CSS transitions, we also have a uh, delay. So let's say animation delay. So let's delay the animation by two seconds. So let's just refresh it here. So we wait two seconds, then the animation will take effect. Now again, we've just like CSS transition, we have uh, animation timing function and you've got ease, ease in, ease in and out, ease out and cubic bezier so let's just do uh, ease out first so it's going to start off a uh, fast pace and then when it gets to the end it's going to start easing out and getting a bit slower so you see it starts slowing down and it gets much slower as it gets towards the end of the x-axis now the cool thing about CSS animation is that we're not just limited to these four animation properties here, which are pretty much the same as CSS transitions. We actually have a few more um, options that we can apply to our animation. So to demonstrate these next few properties, I'm just gonna lower the duration of the animation to five seconds and also the delay uh, by one second. Now, as you've probably seen that, when the animation hits the uh, last keyframe of 500 pixels, it jumps back to its original position. And the reason it's doing that is because the CSS animations don't actually affect the element before the first keyframe or the last keyframe. The animation is only taking place between zero pixels and 500 pixels. There's actually styling after and before these keyframes. 
So let's just say, for example, we wanted the animation to stay at the last keyframe. We'd use the animation fill mode property. So we say animation fill mode and we'll say forwards. And now watch when it gets to the end of the animation. You'll see it will stay there. That's because the animation fill mode is overriding the default behavior of CSS animations, reverting back to their original state. And the result of this now is that the animation stays in that position of 500 pixels because the animation fill mode is causing it to take effect after the last keyframe. Now, as well as affecting the styling after the last keyframe, we can affect the styling before the first keyframe. And we do that with a backwards value. Now, to demonstrate how that works, I'm just going to add a bit of a longer delay here. And I'm going to do the starting point of the uh, animation to be 150 pixels. Now, if you watch this animation, you'll see it will jump to 150 pixels and then take effect and you can see that's a bit laggy and just doesn't really look that nice that's because the start of the animation is at 150 pixels but the original position of the submarine is actually at the center left right up against the browser so to stop that lagginess we use the backwards value here so we're just going to say backwards and if i insert this in now you'll see it's much more smoother and the animation now starts at 150 pixels instead of starting here and then jumping there now we've also got both so we can apply both forwards and backwards so now the animation now will start at 150 pixels and then once it gets to 500 pixels it will stay there because the effects are applying um, after the last keyframe too so that's how the animation fill mode property works now another thing we could do here is actually affect how many times we want the animation to run so to demonstrate that i'm just going to comment out animation fill mode and i'm also going to change the delay to one second as well as reverting this back to zero pixels now, if we watch the animation, you'll see it will start from zero pixels and go all the way to 500 pixels. And as before, it will jump back to the start and you see the animation only happens once, but we can affect how many times we want the animation to run. So we do that with the animation iteration count. And let's just say we want the animation to run three times. It will now run three times because of this uh, property here. So there's once and then there's twice. And then there'll be one more time after this. And then once that happens, it will just stay back to its original position and the animation will only take effect three times. Now, you'll most likely see uh, the keyword of infinite used because you just want the animation to continuously keep running. And now this animation will just literally keep running um, forever and ever until you pretty much decide you don't want it to run anymore. Now, another thing you may notice is that the animation only goes in one direction. So it starts from zero pixels to 500 pixels, but we can actually also affect the direction the animation is going. So we do that with the animation direction. So we've got first you want to see reverse and reverse pretty much just as the opposite. So it will start at 500 pixels and reverse back to zero pixels and it will just keep going infinitely because we've set the iteration count to infinite. Now we've also got alternate, which you probably guess will know it will do. It will first start on uh, the first keyframe and end on the last keyframe. And then once it hits the last keyframe, it will go in reverse back to the first keyframe and then just back and forth, almost like a bit of a tennis. Then we've also got alternate reverse. So this is pretty much just the opposite of alternate. So it'll start uh, the last keyframe and reverse back to the first keyframe and then just keep going back and forth. So that's how we can use the animation direction property. And like many CSS property guys, and as I previously mentioned, there's a shorthand property for all of these longhand properties here. So we don't have to write all of these out. So all we need to do is just take this all away and just have the word of animation. And then the first two things we put in here is firstly the name. So we want to link it to the keyframe of sub and we want the duration of this to be five seconds. And let's also add in here a timing function. So we'll say linear. So it always goes at the same pace. And then we can also um, use the keyword of infinite to determine how many times we want the animation to keep going. So just keep infinitely running. And then we can also do a delay. So let's say two seconds. And now the animation will delay by two seconds and then it will go. And then we've all, we can also use uh, the reverse keyword. So it'll act in reverse. And that's how we can pretty much use all of those um, animations in just one line of code. Just wanted to quickly also add guys that we can add more than one method inside of this. We're not limited to just one method. So what we can do from here is what I'm gonna do actually is just get rid of the reverse. So it's just going in the normal direction and we can put in here scale. So we're gonna start it at one and then when it gets to 500 pixels or by the time it gets to 500 pixels, we'll say scale um, two, so it's double the size. And if I start the animation again, you can see it moves along the x-axis, but as it's moving along, it's getting bigger in size. And by the time it gets to the end or 500 pixels, it's pretty much the same size. So to demonstrate how that looks, we're just gonna get rid of infinite. 
and instead put in here forwards. So once the animation kicks off, you'll see it starts getting bigger as it's getting long. And then once it gets to 500 pixels, it will stop there and it'll be double the size it was at the start of the animation. Now, lastly, guys, I just want to have a look at the second way we can declare animations inside our keyframes function here. Now, before I do that, I just want to uh, make the animation a bit longer, remove the scale. And then for the forwards, I want to remove that too. And I just want to make this infinite. So I want this animation to continuously keep running. And I just want to make the submarine a bit smaller here. And I'm just going to actually make it a bit longer too. Now, as I mentioned earlier, using the from and to inside this keyframe, are great and they will work for most occasions but these are only two reference points now the cool thing about the keyframes uh, function is that they allows us to use percentages now in regards to percentages zero represents uh, the starting point of the animation and 100 percent represents the end point and from here we can add styles anywhere in between that zero to 100 percent giving us more than two reference points within our animation so what i'm going to do quickly to begin with is just say zero percent here for the start and then 100 percent um, for the end now looking at our animation throughout this tutorial you can see it just moves from left to right in a single straight line but let's just say I want it to be a bit more zigzaggy so moving up and down throughout the animation before it gets to the end of the line now using from and to this would be impossible but with percentages now we can actually achieve this so what I'm going to do is add a style on the 30% mark and then also add a style on the 60% mark and what I want is from 0 to 30%, I want to use the transform translate x so on the x-axis. So from 0 to 200 pixels, I want the transform, sorry, the translate y to be negative 100 pixels. So you'll see now from 0 to um, 200 pixels, it'll start moving up in the y-axis and then it will drop back down to the line to heading towards 700 pixels but we want this to be a bit more zigzaggy, so we want it to drop underneath, so it starts heading towards down here, so that'll be the 60% mark. So all we need to do really is just copy whatever we put inside here, paste this, and then say at 400 pixels, so from 200 to 400 pixels, we want this to drop down 100 pixels, so you'll see now it starts going up, hits that 200 pixels, starts dropping down to heading towards that 400 pixels, and then you'll see now it starts heading back towards that 700 pixels, now that'll be it for this tutorial guys. In the next video, we will be using what we've learned in the previous videos and applying it to some examples. So the first example will be creating a fun little animation using our orange submarine friend here. And in the second example, we're gonna be using transitions and animations to a more practical use, turning a static website into a more dynamic one. Now, if you guys like the content, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.